If you're interested in affordable mechanical or automatic watches, there's a lot of great options when it comes to like dive watches and field watches, but if you want something more complicated like a chronograph, your options get limited really fast. Typically an automatic or mechanical chronograph from a Swiss manufacturer is gonna run you a thousand dollars or more, meaning that most of us who are interested in affordable timepieces are limited to quartz options when it comes to a chronograph. But in the last couple of years, we've seen the rise in popularity of the Siegel ST19 mechanical chronograph movement, which is a Chinese produced chronograph movement that's been around for a while. And because of the low cost, it allows watchmakers to produce mechanical chronograph timepieces for under $500. And if you go direct to China, there's a lot of watches being manufactured for well under $300. And one Chinese brand in particular that has a lot of experience with this movement is Mercur. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at a new watch that they're kickstarting based around this movement. This time it's kind of a vintage inspired type 20 military pilot's design that's really cool. Let's take a look. Hey guys, welcome back to Just The Watch. My name's Dave, I live in Japan, and this is a channel all about budget watch collecting. So each week I'm trying to bring you guys a new video, either talking about budget watch collecting or showing you some really cool affordable watches. And today Mercur has sent in a prototype of their upcoming mechanical chronograph watch that is built on the Siegel ST19 chronograph movement and takes its inspiration from vintage aviation pilots watches. Now this watch took sort of a long way around getting to me. It was accidentally sent to my friend Alton over at Half Pass Blog. So I told him to go ahead and do a review of it while well, he had it because he was interested in checking it out. So you can also check out his review and I'll leave a link to that down below. Also, you probably noticed the paid promotions flag at the beginning of this video. It's because I did receive this watch for free from Mercur. However, other than the watch itself, I did not receive any compensation from Mercur, nor did they provide any input into the content of this review. Now, Mercur is a Chinese watch manufacturer slash micro brand that's done a lot of interesting projects. One thing that I do really like about them is their community involvement. They've worked with different watch forums and social media groups to produce special edition watches for them. But this one is one that they're producing themselves and the design is kind of a mashup of two really classic aviation style watches. So one would be the British military Mark 11 pilot's watch specification. And then they've sort of taken some inspiration from one of Breguet's Type 20 Big Eye chronograph pilot's watches and sort of mix those two together to create this new watch. And the design comes together really cohesively. It has some great vintage vibes to it, uh, definitely a strong military feel. And because they've pulled from different influences, it's not a direct copy of any single watch in the past. So there's an element of freshness to it as well. Now this watch is on Kickstarter right now. I believe there's still some early bird pricing available, which puts it at around $200. And if those sell out, I think it bumps up to like $239 and probably the retail will be around 250 or something like that uh, after it eventually comes out. And here's what you're getting for that price. It has a 38 millimeter case with 18 millimeter lugs, 47 millimeters lug to lug, 15 millimeters tall, but about four millimeters of that 15 is the really high acrylic domed crystal, which does really help with the vintage vibes. And so this doesn't wear like a 15 millimeter tall watch at all. Uh, again, a huge chunk of that is from the crystal. And inside you are getting the ST19 manual wind chronograph movement from Siegel. Now, like I said, Mercur has a lot of experience producing watches based around the ST19 movement. And in fact, I've reviewed one of them before. I looked at their Pierre Pauline uh, sort of panda dial racing style chronograph. And they also manufacture some watches under their FOD sub brand. You might be more familiar with that. And this watch shares the same case and crystal that's been used in some of their previous chronograph watches, which is a very nicely finished, elegant, slim case, again, with a really high domed acrylic crystal which gives some cool distortions at extreme angles, but still gives you a really clear view down into the dial from straight on. They've also paired it up with a really great leather strap that has a really kind of military feel to it. It matches the character of the watch perfectly, which is great because it is an 18 millimeter strap and I don't have too many of those lying around. And while even though I love to change straps out, uh, this is a strap that I would probably wind up keeping on this watch. I might wanna swap it over to like an olive uh, NATO. And in fact, I believe that's one of the stretch goals that they have for this is that might be included if they hit that. For the dial design, they've taken a lot of inspiration from that British Mark 11 specification. You're getting Arabic numerals with a triangle at 12 o'clock kind of a pencil minute hand and sort of a cut off hour hand. The dial is painted on and the hour markers, the minute and chronograph second hand are all loomed. And then this is a bi-compax chronograph design. So they have two sub dials, one at nine o'clock and one at three o'clock. 
At nine o'clock, you've got the second hand for the time. So that's the sweeping second hand that will always be running. And then at three o'clock, you have a 30 minute counter to track minutes on the chronograph. The main second hand on the dial is for the chronograph function. So that will remain stationary until you activate the chronograph and then it will begin sweeping and tracking elapsed seconds. Now, one of the unique things about this design is that big eye so the nine o'clock subdial where it counts the minutes is oversized, which gives a little bit of an asymmetrical look uh, that looks really cool. And I believe the intent for that would be to be able to read that chronograph uh, minutes hand a little bit easier. And on that large three o'clock subdial, they have loomed indexes, but while they look really cool, they're not really functional after dark because the chronograph uh, minutes counter hand is not loomed. And that brings us to one of the main complaints that I have about this design. And that is with the small subdial hand that they've used on the minute counter. Well, it's cool that that hand is in red to match the chronograph functions and kind of give you a visual cue that that is the chronograph minutes counter. It is the exact same size as the hand on the small second subdial. One of the primary design elements of this watch is that big eye, so that larger minutes counter, uh, which is meant to help with legibility. But because the minutes counter hand is not large, it's again, exactly the same size as the other hand, it doesn't really help legibility that much. And since it's also not loomed, it doesn't really help you with the legibility after dark, even though you have loomed indexes on that counter. But that one minor complaint aside, I feel like the design overall does look really attractive and appealing. It has a great military vibe to it, and I think it's gonna look great on the wrist. And also this being such a compact watch, it is very comfortable on the wrist. This is a really great case to wear. The strap is also very comfortable. So overall, I do really like the design. Now let's talk a little bit about the Siegel ST19 movement that is powering this watch. This is really one of the few ways you can get a mechanical chronograph watch on your wrist for under $1,000. And because of that, it is a really cool movement. It is amazing that you can have a mechanical chronograph movement this cheap. It is a movement with an interesting history and unique heritage, and it has been in production for a long time. But I think you also need to have some good expectations going into this movement. There's a reason why this movement can be found in watches for $200, while more expensive chronographs from Swiss manufacturers typically range in $1,000. You shouldn't expect to get the same performance you would get in a $1,000 or more Swiss chronograph movement than you would get in this watch here. One of the main challenges seems to be with this movement is a little bit of inconsistency with it coming out of the factory. And so while I've heard from a lot of people who have gotten watches with this movement and had absolutely no problems whatsoever with it, I've reviewed about four watches with this movement inside and on almost all of them, I found some sort of quirkiness with it. One challenge that manufacturers often have is in lining up the second hand for the chronograph when it resets back to 12. And that's something that Mercur says they check themselves and tend to do a pretty good job of. And this one is lined up almost perfectly. You, you have to really get into macro to really see that it's just a hair off. But a more noticeable quirk for me was that the sweep on this movement is not as smooth as it should be. The movement has been very accurate, keeping it around negative seven seconds per day, but the sweep kind of jumps around a little bit, which isn't quite as aesthetically pleasing. You also need to keep in mind that this is a hand wound mechanical chronograph. So that means you're gonna have to wind it every day. Power reserve is roughly around 40 hours, but that really depends on how much you use the chronograph. If you leave the chronograph running all the time, that's gonna drain your power reserve a little bit faster. Now, one of the coolest things about the ST19 movement is the way that it looks. And so that brings us to another kind of complaint I have about this watch, and that's that they went with a closed case back on it. Unless you already have another watch with an ST19 movement in it that has an open case back so you can see it, you really probably want to have an open case back because this is definitely something that is significantly more interesting to look at than your standard Seiko NH35 or most uh, budget automatic movements that you're gonna see out there. And while the closed case back fits in great with the military theme and it looks great on this watch, I feel like being able to see the ST19 movement in this is something that most people who are interested are probably going to want. Now that is a stretch goal on the Kickstarter campaign. So hopefully if they get enough backers, they'll be able to reach that stretch goal and get the open case back option on there. Taking a quick look at the loom on this watch, the loom is pretty good. It's not like a dive watch bright, but it's you know on the average side for most field watches and pilots watches that I've seen. It looks really cool in the dark. Gives you a nice period of legibility after dark, but it's not something that's gonna last particularly long but I think that's totally fine for a pilot style watch in this price range. Overall, I'm really impressed with the design of this watch. As always, I feel like Mercur's build quality is excellent for the price that they're asking. And particularly at this early bird Kickstarter pricing, uh, I think you're getting a really good deal. And this Kickstarter is already about halfway done. They have reached their funding goal, which was set pretty low. 
And again, I think that that's because Mercur manufactures their own watches, so they have a lot of advantages going into Kickstarter with that. Um, they don't need as much upfront cost to get this going. So if you back this watch, you're pretty much guaranteed to get it at this point. And if you like the style of a military chronograph watch and you're looking for something with that mechanical chronograph movement inside of it, I think this is a great one to kind of look at as a, a starter watch or to continue building your collection. So I definitely think this is something that's gonna appeal to a lot of people. I'll leave links to the Kickstarter down below. And if you guys are interested in more content like this, of checking out affordable watches and learning about how to build an affordable collection, definitely invite you to subscribe to the channel. Again, I shoot to put out videos about once a week. I also am selling these t-shirts and I've got actually not just this one, but a lot of other cool designs I've been putting together, kind of adding more on a regular basis. So head over and check out the t-shirt shop as well if you want to support the channel and get your hands on some cool watch themed t-shirts. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up for today. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you later. Bye.